starting us off with number 10 are zombie worms or bone-eating worms. Now this creature can grow up to being two inches long if it's female, whereas the males are microscopic. Now despite being worms and not sounding all that scary, they can eat rock-hard bones of animals a million times bigger than them like whales. They secrete acids that allow them to access the inner contents of the bones and then the symbiotic bacteria converts the bones, proteins and fats into food for the worms. They have feathery branches all over them that help pour oxygen into the worm so it stays alive. They can be found at the depth of around 9,491 feet, feeding on the carcasses of dead whales. I'm okay with worms, but these worms I cannot do. Coming in at number 9 is the vampire squid. It's incredibly fast, incredibly pale. It sparkles in the light. You know what it is the vampire squid. <laughs> but if you said Edward Cullen, I wouldn't be mad either. Now the vampire squid is the last surviving member of the vampire Morphida and therefore they share qualities with both the octopus and the squid. It uses its ear-like fin to swim and its jellyfish-shaped body helps it swim fast. They can grow up to being 30 centimeters long and vary from being a pale red color to being jet black. When they're on the hunt, they use the photophers covering their body to light up in patterns that confuse their prey. When they're the ones being hunted, they pull the webbing between their tentacles right over their head and just hide in there kind of like a cocoon. Kind of like I do when I'm having a depressive episode. Just in my cocoon. <laughs> At number eight, we have the deep sea hatchet fish. Now I don't ever use the term fugly because I think it's so rude, but this sour faced looking fish is actually fugly. The hatchet fish is quite small. They only go up to three to 12 centimeters long, which is actually nothing. Hence, as you can imagine, they're quite an easy prey. Despite being disadvantaged by their size, the camouflage techniques makes them basically invisible to predators. They produce light from their stomach, making them bioluminescent. They control how much light they emit by how much light is in the water at the time. If you reveal your silhouette, then it's game over, so they try and match the light levels in the water so they remain hidden. They can be found anywhere between 50 meters below the surface to 1,500. Filling on number seventh slot is the ping pong tree sponge, aka the chondrocladia. Honestly, when I first saw a picture of the sponge, I thought it was a bunch of balloons on a stick, but I mean, I refuse to judge the creature by its name or its balloon-like structure, so let's get into it. It's thin and long and has little translucent balls at the end of it which look like ping pong balls, hence the name. However, they're actually dotted with tiny hooks, meaning if any prey gets too close, they'll become trapped and then the sponge will just start eating it alive. It is legitimately a flesh-eating sponge that's found 2,700 meters under the surface. Now, at number six is the Dumbo octopus scientifically known as the Grimpotethus. Now from the name you can probably guess that this creature kind of looks like Disney's Dumbo the elephant. It has floppy ears on the side, deep set eyes and eight short tiny tentacles and honestly it's, it's quite cute. I wouldn't mind finding that if I was deep underwater, however you guys know me I'll never be deep underwater. It can be found at least 9,800 meters deep in the trench and I kind of want to hug it. The Dumbo octopus can grow up to being 8 to 12 inches big and they actually travel through the water by flapping their ears. But don't be fooled by their cuteness because they can still swallow their prey in one single gulp. So I mean, I mean, I mean. Coming in at number five is the frilled shark. Now you guys know how I feel about sharks. I refuse to look at them. I don't even want to think about them. I really wouldn't mind if they went extinct, but that's just me. Now the frilled shark is one of the ugliest variations of the mammal that I have ever seen. They have a snake-like body, but they sort of look like eels and boast a set of 300 teeth, which is insane. Despite living so deep, at least 5,000 meters below the surface, the frilled shark was actually one of the first deep sea creatures to ever be discovered. I don't know how since they're so deep and frankly terrifying, but facts are facts. The name is inspired by the creature's frilled gills. They've been dubbed a living fossil, so they have very primitive looking features. And honestly, when you look at it, you'll know what I mean. The thing looks like it's been alive for a million years and it's on its last breath. And hopefully, for my sake, I hope it is. Mic drop. At number four is the deep sea dragonfish. I feel like the deeper the creatures are, the uglier they get. Like, why is that the rule of this video? The dragonfish has oversized teeth, a slippery skin that looks like an eel's, and a hideous face. Reaching up to six inches long, they can be found between 700 to 6,000 feet below the surface and are known as an assassin. Like most deep sea creatures, the dragonfish is bioluminescent and not only uses it to hide from its predator and preys, it also glows in order to communicate with its own 
and kind. They're ugly because they have this whisker-like lighted barbell coming out from its lower jaw that other fish think is a meal, so they just come closer and closer thinking they're gonna get their lunch and they're not. You know why? Because it's a trap. It's a trap. Filling on a three saw is the barrel eye fish. And this fish made me laugh so much. I don't even know why. For some reason, it just looks like it's so done with life and it's just so over everything. Like it's just so mad at the fact that it's a barrel fish. It's like, why me? And you know for a fact if it could talk, you know it have those deep voices and it would just take way too long to even complete a sentence. Either way, first things first, this fish has a transparent head. Let's just talk about that. It has two barrel-shaped eyes that point upwards, allowing it to see the silhouette of all its prey. They can be found between 400 to 2,500 meters deep, and scientists theorize they have transparent heads so they can get a bit more light inside. Personally, I just think this one is kind of cute. Now, and number two is the telescope octopus, found at depths deeper than 6,500 feet. These octopi don't swim horizontally. No, no, they actually suspend themselves upwards. That makes it harder for predators below them to see their shape. They're almost completely transparent and the reason they're called the telescope octopus is because they have two protruding eyes that not only rotate, they also allow the octopus a much wider peripheral vision. Honestly, they're also kind of cute and small and their eyes are tiny. They're just very cute little creatures. The octopus that looks like one of those toys you'd get in a McDonald's Happy Meal. I know this because I have eaten many McDonald's Happy Meals growing up. It's my go-to order, my chicken burger, gotta have it. And finally, at number one is the goblin shark. Now, I think this creature is by far the ugliest one on the list, which may be why it takes our number one spot, I'm not gonna lie to you. Also known as a living fossil, this species is 125 million years old and can be found at depths lower than 4,300 feet. They can grow anywhere between 10 to 13 feet long, and the most prominently ugly thing about them is their snout. It kind of resembles a sword, and its jaws not only protrude, they extend when eating. If that isn't horrific enough, they also have 30 to 50 teeth on their upper jaw and 30 to 60 on their lower. The goblin shark uses sight, smell, and electroperception to track down their prey, but you don't know that much about them since sightings of them are so, so rare. Starting us off at number 10 is a plastic bag. That's right, folks, even the deepest spot on earth isn't free of man's worst creation ever. Single-use plastics. During one of the deepest dives ever recorded, famous underwater explorer Victor Vescovo traveled seven miles below the ocean's surface down to the Mariana Trench. While down there, Vescovo and his crew discovered tons of new and interesting things, but not all of them were cool. He reported that he also found a plastic bag and even some candy wrappers. Down at the deepest place on Earth. So, that's cool. Folks, I don't think it's a hard concept to understand, but please don't litter. Things like plastic bags were not made to help out anyone but ourselves. These cause a great danger to our wildlife all around the world, and if we have to use these materials, just please dispose of them properly. No one else should have to put up with your trash except for the garbage man. In our number nine spot today, we have the fact that life exists. The first time anyone ever went on a deep dive into the Mariana Trench, no one was exactly expecting to find signs of life in the extreme environment of the the deep sea. So it was quite a shock when they found out it was absolutely teeming with life. Because of the lack of sunlight, or really any light, in the Mariana Trench, you won't find any plant life or algae, but there are tons of living beings, from microorganisms to scary looking fish. All of the life in the trench has had to adapt in one way or another in order to live in this environment, whether that is naturally developing pressure proof shells, or having insane eyesight that can catch even the faintest glimmer, or having other heightened senses that can help detect prey or predators. All of these special adaptations help us understand more about how life in the deep sea evolved, but some can even be used to help us advance scientifically and medically. It is no small feat to head down to the Mariana Trench, but the more we can discover down there, the better. At number eight, we have Jupiter-like microbes. Say what? Back in 2012, during the Deep Sea Challenge expedition, researchers found these fuzzy mats of bacteria clinging to the rocks at the bottom of the trench. Usually one of the first things scientists look for in the harshest places on Earth are any signs of life possible. It helps them understand how life can be possible in parts of the world or even the universe that don't operate like Earth's habitable places. When scientists explored the serena deep part of the trench with a robotic lander, they found evidence of a thriving microbial community down and around the deep sea rocks. These microbes appear to feed off of 
the chemicals produced with the sea when the sea floor rocks react with the water because they don't rely on the falling of the marine snow. It raises questions and possible hypotheses for scientists that maybe this is how some life forms exist in the farthest reach of our universe, such as Jupiter and Saturn's moons. In our number seven spot today, we have the Daikoku Seamount. This seamount is located within the Mariana Arc and was fairly recently found to be hydrothermally active. So basically, it is a functioning underwater volcano, which is super cool. That is not even the cool and unexpected discovery I want to talk about today. During the submarine Ring of Fire expedition in 2006, it was realized that this seamount happens to also feature a pool of liquid sulfur. That might not seem like the most amazing thing, but it is definitely very cool. Firstly, the way it looks is absolutely insane because it has gases rising off of it, which appear as smoke, but like smoke underwater. I don't know the science behind it, but all I know is that it looks like nothing I've ever seen before. The next reason why this is super cool is because of the fact that this is almost never seen here on Earth, and the only other time we found a comparable pool of sulfur to this one has been on Jupiter's moon Io. At number six, we have the Mariana snailfish. At 8,143 meters below the surface, scientists discovered a new kind of fish they call the Mariana snailfish. This is a white translucent fish that has broad wing like like fins and an eel like tail, and slowly glides near the bottom of the ocean floor. You can also see its liver from the outside of its body. Eww. While this is the deepest they have ever found an actual fish, researchers don't believe there is much more swimming below that. The amount of pressure is so high that they don't believe any fish is chemically able to withstand the destabilizing effects of its proteins at the depth. So the Mariana snailfish may just be the deepest dwelling fish on the entire planet, which I'm sure we are all hoping for some large, weird, space looking like deep sea monster. But for now, we will just have to settle for a snailfish. It's okay, little guy. I still love you. In our number five spot today, we have human mercury pollution. It was once believed that methyl mercury was mostly produced in the top few hundred meters of the ocean, which would have limited the mercury bioaccumulation because it was thought that the fish who make their home in the deep sea would have a very limited opportunity to ingest the methyl mercury. But a recent discovery has shown that this is just not true. According to two separate studies, which were presented at the Goldschmidt Geochemistry Conference, there is clear evidence of the presence of both man made made and natural methyl mercury, which is quite toxic. This means that since this is spreading to the absolute depths of the Mariana Trench, the pollution is turning out to be much more widespread than what was once thought. They know that it is coming from the mercury in the upper ocean because of some sort of isotope evidence. The reason this discovery is important is because when mercury reaches the depths of the sea, it is turned into methyl mercury, the super toxic one, by tiny microbes. From there, it gets eaten by small crustaceans who then get eaten by fish who then get eaten by bigger fish and so on and so forth and then it gets into our food web which is dangerous for both humans and animals. It is unclear exactly what is going to happen with this information but I guess it's good to have the whole picture in order to make the best most educated decisions. At number four we have urethenes plasticus. As we learned earlier the Mariana Trench has not gone untouched by plastics. Well back in 2014 scientists discovered a new species at 6900 meters below and the tiny crustacean was found to already have ingested some of Earth's plastic. Therefore, they gave it the name Urethenes plasticus. With the support of the World Wildlife Foundation in analyzing the newly discovered species, scientists found a 6.5 millimeter large piece of large microfiber made up of 80% PET in its body. PET is a substance found in a variety of commonly used household items such as water bottles and workout clothes. Now it's also found in deep sea wildlife, so much that we're naming deep sea creatures after plastics. This one is alarming because in the deepest parts of our planet that we know the least about, even less than space, we're still finding humans making their mark before humans even get there themselves. <laughs> Yikes. Let's hope we don't have to start naming species uh, Rubberus Americanus or even Coca Cola Soft Drinkus. Hmm? In our number three spot today, we have ocean sediment. Okay. There's sediment in all of our oceans, so this one definitely doesn't seem like it should be on this list, but the Mariana Trench sediment is unique because of its extreme depth. While there are of course large fish who eat other fish, what do the small fish and living creatures who don't eat other fish eat? Since there's no plants, that is why researchers collected samples of the sediment that lays on the floor of the Mariana Trench, to see what it is made out of, to see what the heck these guys are eating. As it turns out, if the organisms aren't eating chemicals, 
they're eating the leftovers from the fish that live closer to the surface of the ocean. These leftovers float down to the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean, which is referred to as sea snow, and that is what becomes the meal for the smallest creatures living in the trench. Kind of gross when you think about it, but I'm happy for them. Coming in at number two, we have scalding hot water. That's right, just like Katy Perry, the Marianas Trench is hot and cold. At the deepest spot on Earth where basically no sunlight can get through, you would expect that the water was extremely cold, right? Wrong. Well, okay, maybe kind of right. The water usually stays between 34 to 39 degrees Fahrenheit, but also wrong. The water at the bottom of the Mariana Trench can also get scalding hot. At the bottom of the Mariana Trench, there are many different hydrothermal vents, and the water that erupts out of these vents can reach temperatures of 700 degrees Fahrenheit, which is enough to scald anyone swimming down there. But fortunately, the pressure is way too high for anyone to actually swim down there, so that won't be happening anytime soon. That being said, for those that decide to dive deep, 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 deep down there, make sure that the deep sea sub you're in is not only pressurized, but also has an AC, because you don't want to cook like a boiled lobster. In our number one spot today we have giant amphipods. I will never not be fascinated by these things so here we are again with more giant amphipod facts. Amphipods are little crustaceans that can be found in most waters on earth and they're kind of like shrimp. The Mariana Trench variety are absolutely shocking compared to the amphipods we are used to and that is because they are like the Shaquille O'Neal of shrimps. They're huge! These guys can be found 35,797 feet or 10,911 meters deep in the trench and while most amphipods are like 2 to 3 centimeters or about an inch long, these guys are a whopping 34 centimeters or just over 13 inches long. Like what? A scientist explained that the discovery is a bit like finding a foot long cockroach. And I have to say that the surprise may be the same but I would rather find a huge shrimp than a huge cockroach any day. Before the discovery of these guys, researchers didn't even know that amphipods pods could grow this large, so it's safe to say that they certainly were not expecting this discovery. Number 10, ping pong tree sponge. Doesn't sound scary, but it is. This one is like the Venus flytrap of the trench. Even though it's got a silly name, this creature devours its prey in the most painful way possible. Though it looks pretty harmless, kind of like a bunch of fluffy dandelions tied together. Stretching out from the stem, there are like bubble gum bubbles extending in every direction, but don't be fooled by the double bubble persona. Attached to each globe are spicules with little hooks on them. These hooks act like Velcro and attach onto the fine hair of crustaceans. Once they hook, the sponge draws its cells towards the prey and begins a process called phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is the ingestion of bacteria and the process takes tiny pieces bit by bit until the creature is no more. What a way to go. Huh? It would be like someone stripping off a portion of your cells until you utterly dissolve. Ah, that's horrific. Gross. Number nine. Giantism. Considering life can indeed survive in the deepest areas of the Marianas Trench, it's opened up a lot of questions about the conditions under which life can develop and survive. Say for instance, if life can thrive here, but can it survive on Europa for example. But not only are there creatures living there, some of them are giant. This is known as deep sea giantism. Giant amoebas and isopods have been discovered and scientists are aching to know why. Mass Massive amphipods have been discovered and get bigger the deeper they go, while the more shallow the water, the smaller they are. So it begs the question, what else is bigger than it should be lurking down there? Number 8. Zombie Worms if worms make you squirm, then I give you full permission to skip to number 7. But for everyone else, I'm glad you're sticking with me. Zombie worms, aka Osidax, may not be your typical zombies, but they share some similar traits. They like to eat things that are dead and alive? I don't know. These little guys, once they latch on, are capable of devouring bones of some of the biggest marine creatures on earth. Some of the bones are as hard as stone. While they sit there looking terrifying, they use a potent acid to dissolve the bone and bacteria for their consumption. They also have a very strange mating ritual, as the males actually live inside the females, and it's the females who devour the bones. So. I'm almost glad the real zombies don't reproduce that way, or at least that I that I know of. Like, there's probably a comic out there inspired by these special creatures, so who knows. We'll see that in the next like 30 days later, 28 days later, whatever it is. Number 7, Dragonfish. Tiny 
tiny but mighty has never been so strange. But it's so small, but it's so small. How could I be so scared of it? Dude, the whole world is terrified of spiders. So don't ask me, they're like this big, but they just make me want to die. The dragonfish is a scaleless, slimy fish with massive teeth compared to the size of its body. If one bit you, it'd be like being stabbed by tiny needles. Like many others on this list, this creature is capable of emitting its own light by way of bioluminescence. Like an anglerfish, it has a small probe that glows to attract its next meal. It feeds mainly on small crustaceans. These poor, poor crustaceans, they got a hard life. And fish, though it's not really picky. I don't think it can be when you live down there. It can withstand the immense body crushing weight of depths of 5,000 feet, so do not be fooled. You gotta be an incredibly powerful fish to be able to withstand that kind of environment. Number six, the frilled shark. Fun fact about this keen survivor, the frilled shark was thought to be an extinct species until two men in Australia accidentally caught one in their net back in 2015. A terrifying combination of an eel and a shark, these apex predators are notorious for swallowing their prey whole. It's slim pickings down there, they don't know when they're going to get their next meal so you might as well just gulp it down. They have several rows of sharp teeth perfect for hooking their prey into the depths of their stomach. They mostly enjoy squids but have been known to enjoy some fish and even their own kind. They are incredibly rare as you can probably guess, so very little is known about their ecology. So the information we do have are from the ones we've managed to capture. But perhaps the reason they have survived 80 million years, 80 million years, is because of how well they've flown under the radar. Makes you wonder if there are any other deep sea creatures we think are extinct, but are simply waiting. Ooh. Number five, the viper fish. I guess if you don't see the light of day, there's no reason to, to look good, I guess. Though it is cool to be resilient, it doesn't come gift wrapped. The viper fish is yet another really unusual looking fish on this list with a ruthless attitude. It has huge fang like teeth so big they don't fit in its already massive mouth. Tiny but mighty, this creature reaches about 11 to 12 inches in size and are capable of reaching very high speeds. They claim their meals by ramming into them and impaling them with their sharp teeth. They know this because the first vertebra right behind the head is designed to absorb the shock. Sometimes though, it plays the waiting game. It uses its long dorsal fin conveniently equipped with together now, bioluminescent photophore. You'd think with so many creatures playing the same game, the smaller prey would be wise to it, but thankfully for the viper fish, not yet, maybe later. Number four, fan fin sea devils. Life always finds a way, and in the darkest, coldest parts of the world, creatures like the fan fin sea devil have come up with some weird ways to survive. The fan fin is a type of angler fish, but instead of one bioluminescent lure, they have a whole army of them. It looks like a fish with a bunch of hairy spores stretching out from its body. They float through the water seeking any potential prey, plus they help the fish balance. Thankfully they are pretty tiny with the females reaching only about 6 inches in length, so if humans actually figured out how to swim down there in a wetsuit, its bite may hurt but it won't cause much damage. The males are actually so small they are considered parasites that latch onto the female in order to reproduce. Ruthless, man. Woo. These ladies. These ladies are fierce down there in the depths. Number three, the barrel eye fish. Ever wish you could see into someone's head? Uh, well, chances are, if you've thought about it, something like it exists. The barrel eye fish is a creature that leaves it all out on the table, has nothing to hide, and it creeps me the heck out. On top of its head is a transparent dome, and the two glowing orbs inside it are actually its eyes. It seriously looks like it swam straight out of a comic book, but hey, truth is stranger than fiction. Its eyes are ultra sensitive to light and can rotate up to see silhouettes of their prey. They capture as much light as possible, and they're flat fins allow them to hover and wait for some unlucky dinner to pass on by. Weird, creepy, strange, I don't like it. Number two, the goblin shark. Guys, this poor guy, this poor dude. I, I, can't, I can't help but make a face every time I look at this creature. It looks like Tim Burton drew the ugliest thing he could think of and nature thought it was a great idea. You know? After all, you don't get called a goblin shark for looking pretty unless you're David Bowie. He's the goblin king. 
and he's so nice. The creepiest thing about them is that they can shoot their jaw out three inches in order to lunge out at their prey. Their long, unfortunate looking snouts are covered with sensory organs called ampullae, which will help sense electrical fields. They can technically see electricity, which is kind of cool. Their main sources of food consist of some creatures already listed, like the anglerfish, squid, rat tails, dragonfish, along with cephalopods and squid. So at least they are eating some of the other scary things, but still. Try getting that image out of your head. Like the, just the jaw, it's like I don't like it. And last but not least, human garbage. Out of all the creatures and discoveries on this list, this one sent the biggest chill down my spine. 35,000 feet below sea level, human garbage has been found. A plastic grocery bag is the deepest known piece of plastic trash ever found at a depth of 36,000 feet inside the trench. It was found when scientists looked through the deep sea debris database, a collection of videos and photos from over 5,010 dives over 30 years. Plastic was the most prevalent of all the debris in the database, making up 89%. It was mostly the single use plastic fork or water bottle, so think about that the next time you go for takeout. You might accidentally stab an anglerfish. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have comb jellies. Comb jellies are gelatinous creatures that are named for their unique plates of fused cilia, which are called combs. These combs help the jellies move through the water like boat oars. And while other microscopic organisms also have this sort of mechanism, comb jellies are the largest animal with this feature. These combs are also part of the reason that comb jellies are so gorgeous to look at. Rather than bioluminescence, the rainbow light effect that can sometimes be seen on them is from light diffracting off of the combs in all different directions. Many comb jellies have one pair of tentacles, although they appear to have multiple, but that is just caused by their tentacles branching out. These tentacles are used to help them hunt like a sort of fishing line. Aside from this, these jellies don't sting, which is always a good thing. Not that I'm planning on heading into the deep sea anytime soon. In terms of today's list, I'd say that these guys are one of the less creepy creatures we've got going on. In our number 9 spot today, we have the ping pong tree sponge. Doesn't this name sound so cute and sweet, like something you'd want as like a little pet? Well, think again. These little things are not what their sweet name would suggest. The name, of course, comes from their appearance as they quite literally look like a little tree that's growing ping pong balls, but those little ping pong balls are where it all starts. The ping pongs have tiny little hook-like extensions that are there to trap any kind of prey that gets too close. From there, the sponge will slowly consume its prey while still alive. This may not be the most vicious creature in all of the deep sea, but it is proof that looks can be very deceiving. Would you have thought that this little thing would be a carnivorous creature? It honestly was a little surprising to me, personally. In our number 8 spot today, we have the deep sea dragonfish. These guys are a pretty strong contender for strangest looking animal on this list. These predatory fish use their fang-like teeth to grab onto their prey in the dark, cold, deep sea environment. They have no scales and instead slip slippery eel-like skin which only adds to their creepiness level. Similar to the anglerfish, these guys have a lighted barbel that hangs from its lower jaw to attract its prey towards it. These fish really use bioluminescence to their advantage, but they also have another less common ability. Firstly, since many of their prey are also bioluminescent, they have a special stomach that will ensure the light cannot be seen from the inside of their stomach so as to not give away their position. Secondly, they are able to produce a red glow. This glow is thought to perhaps be used to signal other dragonfish, but it is definitely used by them to illuminate and detect their prey. They are the only known fish that has the ability to both produce and see red light, as most fish can only see more of a blue light. So while these guys are definitely very creepy to look at, they're also pretty interesting and kinda talented. In our number 7 spot today, we have the zombie worm. These worms were first discovered in 2002, where they were living in the bones of the carcass of a dead whale, nearly 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters deep in the ocean. The reason these guys have the common name zombie worm is because of the fact that their main food source is those same bones that they were first found living in. These guys love to eat bones, but in their own special way because of the fact that they don't have mouths or stomachs. Instead, they secrete an acid from their skin that dissolves the bones, which frees up the fat and proteins that are trapped inside. The worms then have their symbiotic bacteria that lives inside of them digest the fat in the protein. Here's the thing though, we actually don't know how the nutrients from the bacteria 
get to the worm. They either digest the bacteria somehow, or there is some sort of process where the nutrients get transferred. While when they were first found, they were chowing down on whale bones, zombie worms are happy to eat any kind of bones that they can come across, and they've actually been observed making a meal out of non-aquatic animal bones that somehow ended up in the deep sea. In our number 6 spot today, we have the barrel eye. This guy is one weird looking fish, man. The barrel eye fish is also known as the spook fish, and they of course get their names due Due to their appearance. These fish are relatively small and they are best known for their extremely unusual transparent fluid filled heads. When these fish were first discovered, there were so many questions surrounding them. At first, scientists thought that their eyes were fixed in place, but after some further research, it was able to be determined that they are able to rotate both up and forward. The fish is usually found motionless, just hanging out in the depths of around 600 to 800 meters or 2,000 to 2,000. 600 feet in the ocean. This fish has been known for quite some time with its first discovery coming in 1939, but it wasn't until 2004 that a photograph of a live one was ever captured for the world to see how unique these guys really are. There also used to be many drawings of these guys, but never with their transparent head because of the fact that it gets destroyed when the fish is brought up from the deep sea. So not that I think anyone is going to go diving in the Mariana Trench anytime soon, but if you do, don't bring these guys up from their home. They're happy down there with their heads fully intact. In our number 5 spot today, we have the ghost fish. This little ghost fish was caught on camera in 2016 as it was casually swimming along a ridge around 8,202 feet or 2,500 meters deep in the ocean. The fish is around 10 centimeters long and has translucent, scaleless skin and the creepiest, colorless eyes on any fish I've ever seen. Here's the craziest thing about this whole ordeal though. This was the first time a live fish from its family has ever been seen before. This little fish swimming along minding his own business has absolutely no idea that he was a huge discovery for the human scientists on land. There is still so much that is left a mystery about these guys, but any kind of new discovery is most definitely always a step in the right direction. In our number 4 spot today, we have the aluminum plated amphipods. These guys are found not only in the Mariana Trench, but also in the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the trench. Amphipods usually have shells made out of calcium carbonate, but the extreme environment in these guys' habitats make their shells basically just dissolve. They of course can't just be walking around naked and shellless, so what do they do? They adapt in order to preserve their shells. After collecting some of these guys from the deepest parts of the ocean, scientists were able to realize that their exoskeleton contained aluminum on the surface, which then led to the question. How did these guys find metal since it is pretty sparse in seawater? Well, as it turns out, these guys use sugar based chemicals in their bellies to extract aluminum ions from the mud on the sea floor that it ends up ingesting while devouring the plant debris that floats down from the surface. In alkaline seawater, these aluminum ions form what is called aluminum hydroxide gel, which is a compound that we as humans use for like protecting our upset stomach from stomach acid. This gel then coats their shells and acts as a type of of chemical protection so as to keep the calcium carbonate exoskeleton from dissolving. I don't know guys, I just think that's one of the coolest things that I've ever heard a shrimp do. This is the first known amphipod to do something like this and these guys are now an important part of researching how maybe one day we can find an environmentally friendly way to produce aluminum. In our number 3 spot today we have basket stars. Basket stars are like the Mariana Trench cousin of the starfish and when you see them you can totally understand why. These guys have this same main kind of disc that you see on a starfish, but rather than five stiff arms, these guys have five long, slender, flexible arms that all branch out from themselves repeatedly to form even more little tiny arms, with the last branch usually ending up curled. There is no real rhyme or reason for the shapes of basket stars, as it just depends on how they grow. So while some look beautiful and almost like a webbing of lace, there are some that look absolutely chaotic. You know what they say? No two basket stars are the same. I don't think anyone has ever said that, but we're gonna start. Basket stars are able to navigate around the seafloor by wiggling their arms around, and they also have the ability to curl into a ball when they're feeling threatened by predators. They also do eat, as they have a mouth located on the underside of their disc, and they prefer to eat things like krill, small crustaceans, and zooplankton. In our number two spot today, we have giant tube worms. These guys were totally unknown to scientists until the discovery of the hydrothermal vents 
sense because these giant tube worms live off of and thrive in these extreme areas. These giant tube worms feed off of the tiny bacteria that get their energy from the chemicals coming from the vent water. These giant tube worms grow to be around 8 feet or over 2 meters and they have no mouth or digestive tract. Instead, they rely on those bacteria we talked about to live inside of them for their food, like a wonderful symbiotic relationship. These guys can best be spotted by their bright red plume, which is used for exchanging compounds with the seawater, such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. I could talk about these guys for forever because there's so many interesting facts about them, but I'll end off with just one more, and that is that the outer shell of these worms is made up of a natural substance called chitin, which is also the main component component in the exoskeletons of crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. One more quickly, but I swear, it's the last one. These tube worms also have no eyes, but they can sense movements and vibrations, and they will retreat into their protective tubes when they feel threatened. Okay. Now I'm actually done. In our number one spot today, we have the predatory tunicate, one of my favorite creatures to ever exist. They're so weird. These guys are basically like the Venus flytraps of the deep sea. These invertebrates make their home anchored along the deep sea canyon walls and seafloor as they wait for their meals to drift on by. Like the flytrap, when they catch a piece of their prey, their mouths will snap shut until they are finished digesting their meal. These guys start off life looking kind of like tadpoles and they swim around until they find a place to land, which they do upside down by secreting an adhesive to keep them in place. From here, they undergo a metamorphosis and have an incredibly large change. Despite having to worry about its predators, these guys are also very picky about where they live. They need to make sure the chemicals in the water as well as the temperature of the water are just right, and it's also imperative that they stay in place once they find their spot. If they're removed from the canyon wall, they unfortunately will die. The predatory tunicate may seem a little weird. But one cool thing is that they have been found to be useful in the medical world, and they may even have the potential to help with conditions such as melanoma and leukemia, which is absolutely incredible. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have plastic crustaceans. A few years ago, there were little shrimp-like creatures that were found 2,000 feet deep in the ocean, and of course, none other than the Mariana Trench. The little shrimpy crustaceans are approximately two inches long. You might be sitting there thinking, Olivia, a shrimp is not an interesting enough creature to have on this list, but it was when researchers looked into them further, more specifically into their bellies, when things got a little weird. After further research, scientists realized that there was plastic in the bellies of all of these crustaceans. They found PET, which is a common plastic resin that is most commonly used in the fibers for clothing, packaging for food, and for plastic drinking bottles. How did we discover a new species, only to realize it had already discovered our plastic pollution? Scientists are hoping the discovery will bring more widespread attention to the plague of plastic pollution across our world. It probably isn't a great sign that it's affecting our undiscovered species, even in the more difficult to reach places. In our number 9 spot today, we have the glowing jellyfish. Okay, we've all seen or at least heard of a jellyfish before, so it's not the most unusual discovery, but this fancy glowing one is definitely not your average run of the mill kind of jellyfish. In 2016, scientists were surveying the waters near the Mariana Trench when they saw what looked like a glowing flying saucer, but as it turns out, it was just this new undiscovered jellyfish splayed out with its tentacles ready to catch some unsuspecting prey. Inside the bell of this jelly, you can see some bright yellow bulb-like lights and some bright red markings as well. The jellyfish also has two kinds of tentacles, one short and one long. No description of this guy would truly do it justice, so here's a quick video just for reference. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Casper octopus. This is one creature that just might be the cutest on this list, and it was discovered a few years ago by a little deep diving robot called the Deep Discoverer. One day, as the Deep Discoverer is you know, discovering things, it stumbles upon a tiny little octopus just hanging out on a flat rock all by itself. This octopus stumped scientists for a few reasons. Firstly, it kind of resembled a known common species of shallow water octopuses, but this one was found deep in the ocean. The second thing that stumped scientists was the ghostly white color they were seeing. Octopuses have certain pigments which allow them to change color, but this little guy seemingly didn't have them because he was ghostly and iridescent. 
adolescent. At the time of the discovery, scientists were pretty sure this guy was a brand new species of octopus and even believed that it may belong to its own genus as well. In our number 7 spot today we have the Mariana snailfish. In May of 2017, the Mariana snailfish was caught on film at a depth of 8,178 meters in the Mariana Trench. At the time, this was the deepest fish ever recorded, which was a huge step forward for science. The fish was captured on video by a special little lander robot that was specifically designed for the crushing pressures of the deep sea in depths below 600 meters. The camera apparently had some sort of mackerel bait in order to entice the deep sea dwellers into getting close so the camera could get a good look at them. While this snailfish was an already known species, this video was able to catch it swimming 100 meters deeper than it ever had been found before. Was this guy just swimming to the beat of his own drum? Was he just desperate for the bait? Or maybe we just didn't previously know that these guys went that deep. The possibilities are endless. In our number 6 spot today we have the fang tooth. These creepy deep sea dwellers are exactly the kind of thing that you would think lives in the deep dark depths of the Mariana Trench. I truthfully think that they are so frightening so I really hope that they just stay down there. These fish are named after their teeth which totally makes sense considering the fact that these guys have teeth so large that in relation to their body size, they're the largest in the ocean. These guys have to have a special little pocket in the roof of their mouths which are used to store their teeth so that they can actually close their mouths. That is both disgusting and horrifying. The good news is that these guys do not have very good eyesight at all. But I guess with teeth like that, who needs eyes? It is currently believed that these guys hunt by just bumping into their prey, sensing vibrations and movements in the water. All I'm saying is that the Mariana Trench is definitely staying off of my list of travel locations. In our number 5 spot today we have the sponge. I don't know what it is about them, but sea sponges seriously gross me out. So to my dismay, in 2015, deep sea researchers stumbled across an insanely huge sponge deep in the ocean. And when I say insanely huge, I'm talking about the biggest one we've ever found, the size of a van kind of huge. This thing looks like a huge brain and is approximately 11 and a half feet long, 6 and a half feet high and almost 5 feet wide. Researchers explained that huge sponges like this one are integral to providing key ecosystem services like filtering a ton of seawater, as well as the fact that they act as a habitat for a ton of different invertebrate and microbial species. Sea sponges are apparently really difficult to date, but it is known that some can live as long as 2,300 years, which is insane. So I guess while they look ultra weird and really freak me out, they aren't all that bad and do some really important work. Just another case of not judging a book by its cover. In our number 4 spot today we have the Gran Rojo Jellyfish. These guys were first discovered in the mid 1990s and weren't officially categorized as a new species until 2003. Not only did their discovery come with a new species classification, but also a new subfamily. The species was originally being called Big Ugly, which seems like an unnecessary roast, but after some time it was much more affectionately named. Named Big Red. These guys are the largest of all sea jellies, growing to be around 76 centimeters in diameter. They have four to seven fleshy arms rather than the tentacles we're used to seeing on jellies. While most jellies are transparent, these guys are red all over. Because of their deep sea habitat, there is still so much we don't know about them, and only 23 have ever been actually found and identified. So while the research is currently lacking, scientists are doing their best to get us some more answers on these big red jellyfish. In our number 3 spot today we have the barrel eye. Okay. This guy is one weird looking fish. The barrel eye fish is also known as a spook fish and they of course get their names due to their appearance. The fish are relatively small and are best known for their extremely unusual, transparent, fluid filled heads. When these fish were first discovered there were so many questions surrounding them. At first scientists thought that their eyes were fixed in place, but after further research it was able to be determined that they are able to rotate them both up and forward. This fish is usually found motionless, just 
hanging out in depths of around 600 to 800 meters or 2,000 to 2,600 feet in the ocean. This fish has been known for quite some time with the first discovery coming in 1939, but it wasn't until 2004 that a photographer of a live one was captured for the world to also see how unique these guys really are. There also used to be many drawings of these guys, but never with their transparent head because of the fact that it gets destroyed when the fish is brought up from the deep sea. So not that I think anyone is going to go diving in the Mariana Trench soon, but if you do, don't bring these guys up from their home. They're happy down there with their heads fully intact. In our number two spot today, we have the vampire squid. The vampire squid is the last surviving member of its order, and it has similarities with both the squid as well as the octopus, which might make it a contender for most threatening animal on today's list. Like the Dumbo octopus from part one of this video, this guy has little ear like fins that help it propel itself through the water, but unlike the Dumbo octopus, it isn't small and cute and sweet looking. Like a jellyfish, the vampire squid has a gelatinous body that helps it move quicker through the depths of the sea. The vampire squid is covered in light producing organs called photophores, which they are able to use in a way that produces disorienting flashes so as to confuse their prey. While the vampire squid doesn't have ink, it does have the ability, when in really dangerous situations, to shoot out a bioluminescent mucus at whatever is attacking it. Also, this squid is able to regenerate its arms. So I think this all goes to say that if you were in a fight with a vampire squid, I really hope you came prepared because he sure did. In our number one spot today, we have the ghost fish. Okay, well, of course I had to end off today's list with just one more deep sea ghostly creature, and this one is actually super cool. This little ghost fish was caught on camera in 2016 as it was casually swimming along a ridge around 8,202 feet or 2,500 meters deep in the ocean. The the fish is around 10 centimeters long and has translucent, scaleless skin and the creepiest, colorless eyes on any fish I've ever seen. Here's the craziest thing about this whole ordeal though. This was the first time a live fish from its family has ever been seen before. This little fish swimming along, minding his own business, has absolutely no idea that he was a huge discovery for the human scientists on land. There is still so much that is left a mystery about these guys, but any kind of new discovery is is most definitely always a step in the right direction. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have giant tube worms. These guys were totally unknown to scientists until the discovery of the hydrothermal vents that we talked about last time. Like the vent crabs, these giant tube worms also live off of and thrive in these extreme areas. These giant tube worms feed off of the tiny bacteria that get their energy from the chemicals coming from the vent water. These giant tube worms grow to be around 8 feet or over 2 meters, and they have no mouth or digestive tract. Instead, they rely on those bacteria we just talked about to live inside of them for their food, like a wonderful symbiotic relationship. These guys can best be spotted by their bright red plume, which is used for exchanging compounds with the seawater such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. I could talk about these guys for forever because there's so many interesting facts about them, but I'll end off with just one more, and that is that the outer shell of these worms is made up of a natural substance called chitin, which is also the main component of the exoskeletons of crabs, lobsters, and shrimps. Okay, one more quickly, but I swear it's the last one. These two worms also have no eyes, but they can sense movements and vibrations, and they will retreat into their protective tubes when they feel threatened. Okay. Now I'm actually done. In our number 9 spot today we have the frogfish. Frogfish are weird looking creatures, but they are also incredible at disguising themselves. They are fairly sedentary fish and they love to find their home on the sea floor at depths of around 1000 feet or 300 meters. They range from a few inches to a foot in length and their colors vary greatly, which is how they are able to blend in with their surroundings so easily. They actually have the ability to change their color if their environment changes, with the process taking somewhere from a few days to a few weeks. While they can glide through the water, they sometimes also use their fins to basically walk along the sea floor. They feed off of things like other fish and invertebrates, and on their heads they have a special modified fin that kind of resembles a fishing rod with bait on it, which they use to lure in their prey. Little does the unsuspecting prey fish know, while it thinks it's about to get a meal, it's about to become the frogfish's meal. Frogfish are able to eat prey that is much larger than themselves as they have the ability to expand their mouth cavity to 12 
12 times its resting size, which is insane. In our number eight spot today, we have the deep sea lizardfish. Deep sea lizardfish are a small family of deep water fish who are related to the telescope fish. These guys have flat heads and curved, barbed teeth, and they grow up to 78 centimeters or 31 inches in length, which makes them a pretty moderately sized fish. They prefer to stay at depths of 1,600 meters or 5,200 feet, and they are actually one of the world's deepest living apex predators. These lizard fish are known to eat anything that comes their way, including other fish of their own kind. Despite the lack of light in the depths of the ocean, these guys have large eyes and pupils, and their vision is actually really important for their prey detection, as their well developed eyes allow them to see any residual or bioluminescent light. Not a lot is known about their reproduction habits, but one thing that is known is that the deep sea lizard fish have both male and female reproductive organs, which is thought to be an adaptation to low population density. In our number seven spot today, we have the ghost shark. These guys are also commonly referred to as ratfish or spookfish, and their closest living relatives are sharks and rays, but their last common ancestor lived with them around 400 million years ago. Ghost fish were once abundant and diverse, but throughout the years that has changed greatly, and they are now mostly confined to deep water. They prefer to live around 2,600 meters or 8,500 feet deep, and they have elongated bodies with bulky heads. They grow to be around 150 centimeters or 4.9 feet, and their skeletons are made of cartilage. They don't have scales and instead have smooth skin, and they range in color from black to a sort of brownish gray color. These guys use electroreception to find their prey, which is the ability to perceive natural electric stimuli, and they also have a venomous spine in front of their dorsal fins, which acts as a form of protection for them. In our number six spot today, we have the long tail red snapper. These fish feature a beautiful red color, and they also have very large eyes, which help it make its home in the deep sea. These guys can grow to be three feet or 0.9 meters long and 30 pounds. They have a forked tail that grows larger as the fish matures, and sometimes the tips of the tails have a black or white color on the ends. It takes about four years for these guys to reach maturity, which is relatively long for the fish world. There are a few species of this kind of fish, and they can be found in many areas of our oceans, and they are considered a delicacy in some places and cultures. It probably isn't the Mariana Trench variety that people are eating, however, as that would be quite a costly and difficult meal to achieve. In our number five spot today, we have acorn worms. There are a few species of acorn worms, but one in particular finds its home in the deepest points of our seas. These acorn worms can grow up to three feet or just under a meter in length, and they often have brightly colored bodies. They have cilia on their underside, which are used to glide over the ocean floor, albeit slowly as they travel at about three inches per hour. As they move along, they suck the waste from the ocean floor into their gut, and they also constantly leave a trail of feces behind them, which is a nice gross fact for you. When they are ready to move to a new feeding location, they empty their gut, and then they just drift over the bottom, and they do this with the help of an excreted balloon of mucus. So this whole point is just a double whammy of grossness. They can usually be found at depths of around 1,500 to 3,700 meters or 4,900 to 12,100 feet. In our number four spot today, we have basket stars. Basket stars belong to the same phylum as starfish, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. They resemble starfish, but they have five long, slender, and flexible arms. Each one of the five arms also branches out itself repeatedly, with each branch getting thinner, which makes the final branch quite thin and usually curled at the end. The central disc of the basket star where all of the arms come off of is very distinct. While some basket stars have neatly placed arms that look amazing and beautiful, some basket stars look pretty wild and strange. Basket stars move by wiggling their arms around, and they have the ability to curl into a ball when they feel threatened. They also use their arms to catch their prey as they position themselves in the current of the water. They feed on things like krill, small crustaceans, and zooplankton. Surprisingly, these guys do have a mouth, which is located on the bottom side of their disc. In in our number three spot today, we have predatory tunicate. These guys are basically like the Venus flytraps of the deep sea. These invertebrates make their home anchored along the deep sea canyon walls and sea floor as they wait for their meals to drift on by. Like the flytrap, when they catch a piece of prey, their mouth will snap shut until they are finished digesting their meal. These guys start off life looking kind of like tadpoles, and then they swim around until they find a place to land, which they do upside down by secreting an adhesive to keep them in place. From here, they 
undergo a metamorphosis and have an incredibly large change. Despite having to worry about its predators, these guys are also very picky about where they live. They need to make sure the chemicals in the water as well as the temperature of the water are just right and it's also imperative that they stay in place once they find their spot. If they're removed from the canyon wall, they unfortunately will die. The predatory tunicate may seem a little weird, but one cool thing is that they have been found to be useful in the medical world and they may even have the potential to help with conditions such as melanoma and leukemia, which is absolutely incredible. In our number two spot today, we have the deep sea hermit crab. Okay, many of us have seen or heard of a hermit crab before, so at a first thought, they aren't the weirdest thing out there. But as it turns out, the deep sea variety is quite interesting. Instead of these guys carrying around empty gastropod shells like the hermit crabs we are used to, these guys instead carry around sea anemones, and it is one of the weirdest looking things I have ever seen. It looks like these crabs are missing a pair of legs, but instead the legs have actually been adapted to hold the anemone in place. I don't know about you guys, but I really think this one looks like some sort of disgusting sea spider that I hope just stays at the deepest depths of the Mariana Trench. No offense to the crab, it's just not my cup of tea. In the number one spot today, we have the Daikoku Seamount. This seamount is located in the Mariana Arc, about 325 meters or 1,060 feet below sea level and it was found to be hydrothermally active in 2003. In 2014, it was discovered that the submarine volcano was either actively erupting or had been very recently. Along with these discoveries came the realization that this seamount also features a pool of liquid sulfur that was covered in some sort of black coating. This little sulfur cauldron is approximately 4.5 by 3 meters large and is 420 meters deep. There are rising gases like carbon dioxide and hydrogen that are coming out of the pool and they are moving that black crust that sits on top. The rising gases appear like smoke, but underwater, which is super cool. The really cool thing about this little sulfur lake is that it is almost an anomaly on Earth and one of the few other sulfur lakes that are known is actually located on Jupiter's moon Io. While there have been a few other liquid sulfur lakes found on Earth, the one located near this seamount is the most impressive one we have ever found on our planet. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have a plastic bag. It is unfortunately no surprise that on one of the deepest dives we as humans have ever been able to accomplish, along with all of the amazing new creatures and never been explored places, there would be none other than a plastic bag. In 2019, Victor Vescovo took a dive into the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the Mariana Trench, which is an unbelievable feat and not an easy task, and he was rewarded by being reminded of human trash. Despite that little finding, Victor broke the record for deepest dive, which is of course amazing for scientific advancements and research. Every time someone manages to do these things that once seemed impossible, we get closer to revealing more of our ocean's mysteries that lay at the deepest points on Earth, which is very, very cool. While it would be amazing if the dives weren't plagued with plastic pollution, at least they were able to also discover a bunch of new crustaceans and give us all a little look into what life looks like in the Mariana Trench. At number nine, we have the Dumbo Octopus. It's an octopus whose favorite Disney movie is Dumbo. <laughs> just kidding, that would just be weird. Almost as weird as the real Dumbo Octopus. Although, that is how it got its name, because it looks like Dumbo. Anyway, 9,800 meters below the surface and found deep in the Marianas Trench, you can find these dopey, kinda cute looking creatures. These creatures go from eight to 12 inches and swim using their ears. Seems cute and friendly enough, right? Well, surprising for all of us, the Dumbo octopus is actually a predator and can swallow its meals all in one gulp. These kind of octopi also fall under the category of umbrella octopuses because they have webbed tentacles, giving them an umbrella-like shape. Almost like a starfish, but with a massive balloon on its head. Luckily, we're all too big for this dopey looking octopus to feed on us, so if you want to go for a swim and see some, you don't have to worry about them eating you. But I can't guarantee that the other deep sea creatures won't be as small. In our number eight spot today, we have comb jellies. Comb jellies are gelatinous creatures that are named for their unique plates of fused cilia, which are called combs. 
These combs help the jelly move through the water like boat oars, and while other microscopic organisms also have this sort of mechanism, comb jellies are the largest animal with this feature. These combs are also part of the reason that comb jellies are so gorgeous to look at. Rather than bioluminescence, the rainbow light effect that can sometimes be seen on them is from light diffracting off of the combs in all different directions. Many comb jellies have one pair of tentacles, although they appear to have multiple, but that is just caused by their tentacles branching out. I'm saying the word tentacles. <laughs> these tentacles are used to help them hunt like a sort of fishing line. Aside from this, these jellies don't sting, which is always a good thing. Not that I'm planning on heading into the deep sea anytime soon. In terms of today's list, I'd say these guys are one of the less creepy creatures we've got going on today. At number seven, we have the deep sea hatchet fish. It got its name because, well, it looks like a silvery swimming hatchet. There are over 40 species of hatchet fish and they can be found at the depths of 5,000 feet. That's just over 1,500 meters. This fish may be tiny, but it does not look that friendly nor welcoming. The deep sea hatchet fish can grow between 2.8 to 12 centimeters long. So while their size and appearance may not be enough to fend off predators, these deep sea fish have evolved to form an ingenious camouflaging technique. They are also like a lot of other deep sea fish because their bodies are bioluminescent meaning they create their own light and can glow in the dark. Their light shines from their stomachs, but no, they do not have any Care Bear powers in case you were wondering. Revealing a silhouette can be dangerous in the deep ocean because of predators, but luckily for the hatchet fish, it can control its light to match the same light in the water. That's the super cool camouflage technique I was talking about. Man, that could be useful. In our number six spot today, we have the anglerfish. If you've seen Finding Nemo, you might recognize these guys. This bony fish is known for its luminescent horn that is used to lure other fish as prey. There are different kinds of angler fish, but those who live in the deep sea are referred to as sea devils, which truly does feel fitting. The females are much larger than the males and can reach up to almost four feet, while the males can reach up to five and a half inches, but these little sea devils are able to eat prey up to the same size as itself. That's crazy. Luckily, most anglerfish remain so deep in the ocean that they are not a threat to humans. And even if they did live not quite so deep in the ocean, most humans would just be too big for them to even try to attack. That sure doesn't mean they aren't crazy to look at though. Just to add a little more about how strange these guys are though, these fish reproduce when the male fuses into the female and lives off of her resources until it can produce sperm. That sounds like a nightmare. Coming in at our halfway point at number five, we have the frilled shark. As if you weren't terrified enough of sharks, this one looks just as terrifying. Although, now that I see more pictures of it, I can't really take it seriously because it just reminds me of Jerry Seinfeld in the frilly shirt. Anyone else remember that episode? Sorry, Jerry Bear, the shark wore it better. The frilled shark got its name for its six to seven frilled gills on the side of its snake-like body. But that's not the creepiest part of this shark. The frilled shark has a set of 300 razor sharp teeth. They can grow up to six feet in size, which is 1.8 meters. Even though this was one of the first deep sea animals to be discovered in the 19th century, it's not the easiest to find. These sharks swim at depths of 16,000 feet, which is around 5,000 meters. However, it is extremely difficult for scientists to study this deep sea creature. They swim at such deep levels that when brought to the surface, they practically die immediately. Due to those reasons, there isn't much known about the habits and life cycles of these sharks, but but maybe this is just one of those things that is better left unknown. In our number four spot today, we have the ping pong tree sponge. Doesn't this name sound so cute and sweet, like something you'd want as a little pet? Well, thank you, Dad. These little things are not what their sweet name would suggest. The name, of course, comes from their appearance as they quite literally look like a little tree that's growing ping pong balls, but those little ping pong balls are where it all starts. The ping pongs have tiny little hook-like extensions that are there to trap any kind of prey that gets too close. From there, the sponge slowly consumes its prey while still alive. This may not be the most vicious creature in all of the deep sea, but it is proof that looks can be very deceiving. Would you have thought that this little thing would be a carnivorous creature? It honestly was a little surprising to me personally. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have the goblin shark. This shark might just be the creepiest thing on this list. I don't know about you, Olivia, but how did these guys get their names? Well, let's all take a look at the massive goblin-like nose on the front of its face. Yeah, that's how it's got its name. That's how it got its name. It's not really a pretty thing to look at, but at these depths, I don't think there's many people or other fish to impress. These sharks also aren't the usual grayish color. They are instead more of a pink. 
Not only do these things look absolutely crazy, they are also crazy in size. Goblin sharks can reach lengths up to 18 feet. That's 5.5 meters. You probably won't be swimming near any of them anytime soon anyway though, because they live at depths of 3,000 feet. That's about 915 meters. And the older they get, the deeper they dive. A shark that intentionally swims to its grave. How cute. Same as the filled shark, not much is known about these creatures. They are almost as mysterious and sought after as real goblins. For all we know, goblins are real and when they get dropped in water, they morph into these crazy looking sharks and keep their distance from the rest of the world. <laughs> I buy it. In our number two spot today, we have the deep sea dragonfish. These guys are a pretty strong contender for the strangest looking animal on this list. These predatory fish use their fang-like teeth to grab onto their prey in the dark, cold, deep sea environment. They have no scales and instead have slippery eel-like skin which only adds to their creepiness level. Similar to the anglerfish, these guys have a little lighted barbel that hangs from its lower jaw to attract its prey towards it. These fish really use bioluminescence to their advantage, but they also have another, less common ability. Firstly, since many of their prey are also bioluminescent, they have a special stomach that will ensure the light cannot be seen from inside of their stomach so as to not give away their position. Secondly, they are able to produce a red glow. This glow is thought to perhaps be used to signal other dragonfish, but it is definitely used by them to illuminate and detect their prey. They are the only known fish that has the ability to both produce and see red light, as most fish can only see more of a blue light. So while these guys are definitely very creepy to look at, they're also pretty interesting and very talented. And finally, coming in at our number one spot and our weirdest thing found in the Marianas Trench is the zombie worm, aka the bone worm, also also known as the Osidax. But I like zombie worm best. These worms live at the very bottom of the Marianas Trench and the very bottom of the ocean and feed off of bones of dead animals, such as whales. The zombie worm secretes acid to help access the inner contents of the dead bones and it then uses symbiotic bacteria to convert the bones proteins and fats into nutrients that it then uses as food. The feathery branches on the worm wiggle in the water and they pull in oxygen to keep itself alive. Females grow up to 2 inches in length while males are microscopic in size. Sorry boys. Females will collect a harem of males on their body and then the males will find their way into the female oviducts. The female then releases her fertilized eggs into the water and the worm's life cycle begins again. That is about all we know about these little ones because they live at such deep depths of our ocean. So until us humans find ways to explore the depths of the Marianas Trench, we'll just have to make do with what we got. 